Hello everybody, welcome to the 10 most important records of my life. I thought this is somewhat more interesting than just naming the 10 best, because the 10 most important means that these records have uh, broadened my perspective to music and introduced me to something new and just uh, it's a bit more interesting than just naming the usual favorites of Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and what have you. So in chronological order, let's go back to the 70s. In 1977, 78, I was starting to buy various uh, seven inch singles. It was usually something I heard on the radio and I wanted to have this on vinyl. In 1979, I was reading this wonderful book, Elric by Michael Warcock. And I read in his uh, biography that he was also writing songs and performing with a band called Hawkwind. And I said to myself, I should check this out. And I found one LP called Roadhawks in a half price bin at our record shop. That was the first heavy rock album I ever bought. Roadhawks contains the hit single Silver Machine and Urban Gorilla that Hawkwind had done but also some totally different stuff, like for example Paranoia, which is very monotonous and uh, psychedelic. And you should do that, which lasts about 10 minutes in this version and 15 minutes in others. So uh, this is the least commercial thing you can imagine. And uh, this album showed me that musicians are putting out music that is not fitting for singles at all and albums are something totally different to listen to. This is how it started. I quickly got uh, more music from Hawkwind, that was the Quark Strangers and Charm album and then in 1980 a new studio album came out called Levitation and uh, Hawkwind have remained one of my favorite bands ever since. A little while after that, a movie called Pink Floyd, The Wall hit the cinemas with great success and I don't need to tell you anything about the music, I suppose, but um, just let me say that uh, the lyrics that had a real story to tell convinced me that rock and roll music is a lot more than just the usual cliches and uh, that sparked a really new interest in albums for me. New Year's Eve, 1981. German television showed the movie The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, which started my interest in movie soundtracks. This music by Ennio Morricone was so original that it really was a character of its own, not just background music. In 1982 I was listening to the Top 20 on the German radio and uh, they played the usual pop music and suddenly my radio exploded. Iron Fist by Motorhead was on the German charts then. and. Uh, you really can't imagine these days what the effect was like, it just blew away everything. So Iron Fist was the first Motorhead album I ever bought. In the mid 80s I really loved the first Metallica albums, Kill em All, right, the Lightning Master of Puppets. Of course the disappointment with later years, especially after Reload, caused me to sell most of my Metallica bootlegs and other stuff I had on vinyl. Um, I was just keeping this. It was the first Metallica record I ever bought, the 12 inch single Jump in the Fire. And uh, I think it wouldn't be honest if I omitted Metallica and admitted that in the 80s they were one of the most important bands to me. I was introduced rather late to Black Sabbath. I knew some stuff they did with Ronnie James Dio and also some of uh, the hits from the Ozzy Osbourne era. But I really became a fan only after the Headless Cross album with Tony Martin. In the mid 80s, Black Sabbath had been ridiculed, like having a new lineup every month. The, these years, 84, 85, 86, had been uh, devastating to their career. So uh, Headless Cross, was released at a difficult time for Sabbath, but uh, I think it's an absolutely magic album with songs like Kill in the Spirit World, When Death Calls. Uh, they haven't been better since. Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King. That was something which I bought based on a review I read in a magazine. Usually 
New bands were recommended to me by friends, but apparently none of my friends had heard of this band yet. This is still their best album and an absolute classic. We have arrived in the year 1990, where this uh, compilation album came out. It included tracks by bands which I already knew, like Blitzkrieg and Diamond Head and Saxon, but also some bands I had never heard before, like Weapon, Witchfind, Jaguar, Gaskin, Sledgehammer. This compilation was extremely important to me because only after this I started buying all the rare new wave of British heavy metal stuff in the first half of the 90s. Also in the early 90s I was introduced by my friend Daniela to uh, death metal music. She had taped several albums to me including Morbid Angel and uh, Kavakas, Terrorizer and some more. And uh, I had never really listened to death metal before and uh, it was difficult to get used to it at the beginning. But uh, soon one of my favorite albums emerged that was both from a Storm of Chaos. It's an incredibly heavy album and uh, still very impressive today. And now for something completely different. I have listed a lot of European and American music, but now let's also include some Asian music. The uh, Tibetan singer Alan Dawa Dolma has released two albums in Japan and I'm a huge fan of the first one, which is called Voice of Earth. I think about six or seven singles spawned from this album, including my favorite song Ashita Inosanka, or uh, another example, Natsukashi Mirai. She just has an amazing voice, very powerful, and also she can play several instruments herself. It's quality on a totally different level than European pop music, let's face it. So <laughs> if you haven't listened to this kind of thing yet, I uh, will link a video to this. Thank you for watching me until the end and bye bye.